So, how was the forum overall? Um, it's pretty good. This is IDF, for people who don't know, is Intel's show. They do twice a year. They do it once here, and they do it once in Taipei or something, uh, where they talk about some, what some of their upcoming products are at both a high level, and then they have all these classes and sessions and stuff that go to really deep level for people who sit there and write assembly code and that kind of thing to, to know what's coming up so they can prepare themselves. Is it essentially just Intel-centric? Is it all Intel it's products all, and services? It's like or? all Intel and some Intel's sponsors and, and partners and stuff, but it's it's totally Intel-focused all the time. And some people the- ask, since, you know... Uh, Apple's using Intel products now. Oh, did they talk about any of the new upcoming Mac stuff? Never. Of course. Of course not. <laughs> only only Apple will ever reveal new Apple stuff, really. So Now, I, I heard that a new upcoming part from Intel, a multi-court chip, uh, codenamed Nehalem, was being displayed and showed off a little bit. Any new details you can That's share right. about that? That's right. They have... Uh, um, the upcoming new architecture CPU from Intel is the it, codename Nehalem is now got a real name. It's the Core, wait, the Core i7, and we don't know what the i7 means, and neither does Intel. It's not yet. like Intel. It's not seventh generation. It's, it's not just, the seventh generation. There's not okay. seven cores or anything. <laughs> so it's it's the next processor generation after all the Core two and Core quad things that we have now. Um, it's still four cores, but each core has hyperthreading. They're bringing back hyperthreading, so it's eight, you know, virtual logi- cores. Or- yeah, eight logical processors, um, and a bunch of new enhancements, uh, wider issue uh, SSE 4.2 enhancements. They have this new cool thing called Turbo Mode, where if you're running your computer and you're not running heavily multi-threaded apps. So only one or two cores is busy and the other cores aren't doing much. It'll go ahead and power down those cores, but it will use the power it saved shutting down those cores since now you're running at you know uh, lower thermals and stuff and you have more thermal headroom, it'll actually upclock the two cores that are doing work to give them higher speed. Does that include overvolting the part as well for stability, do you think, inside? Or is it it's got, theoretically, it's actually, if you're shutting down those other cores, it, it should cool the part down you it does cool the part down and then they just boost the basically they boost the core clock multiplier on the on the cores that are active to get more performance out of those Uh, they actually have an entire new piece of logic inside the the chip now to manage all the voltage and heat and all that other kind of stuff that they're that it's completely new thing with that so they're that's kind of a neat little trick they're doing. And the overclockers will love it because on the extreme edition parts you can adjust how big a jump those turbo mode steps are, so it'll actually, you know, upclock a whole lot. If you have a really awesome heat sink on there, you can go in the BIOS and tell it, I've got a really awesome, i got a 180-watt heat sink, go nuts, and it'll just, you know, boost things all the time. Very cool. It's pretty cool. So it, performance looks like it's going to be really good. They've got, you know, now an in, integrated three-channel DDR3 memory controllers and all this other stuff, so it's oh. got low memory latency. Shades of AMD, you no? Know? Yeah, yeah, like AMD's been doing for a while, except this is actually not just DDR3, but now it's three channels instead of two, and, you know. So it looks like the performance is going to be really good. They're not going to ship parts till sort of fourth quarter this year, and we don't know what the price is going to be, but we'll... That stuff will be coming soon. Do you think that integrated memory controller, as far as CPU design goes, is going to be something consistent we'll see from now on? Or do you think they'll go back to maybe a separate chip for controlling things like that? No, I think that's one of those things that you want to integrate into the CPU once it becomes economical to do so, because you get lower latencies and better throughput and all that other good stuff. So I think we're going to see that probably from here on out, at least on sort of desktop-type CPUs. Maybe when you get into little bitty things for, like, handhelds and stuff like that, it's not economical to build it in necessarily, so... Good deal. We'll see. Apparently, there were also some flash drives being shown off from Intel. Uh, are we talking for In- hard drive replacement, or are you yeah. talking like a memory stick or something? No, no, hard drive replacement. Intel's been really big into the NAND fl- flash memory stuff. They uh, announced two sets of hard drives, one for enterprise, one for desktop. They're going to come at 80 gig and 160 gig on the desktop stuff, and then like 32 and 64 for the server-type enterprise things. Um, and the performance should be really excellent. One of the problems with flash drives to replace hard drives right now is that when you're, the OS wants to write a small block of information to the flash drive, it actually has to write this big block of information and then kind of like shuffle things around and stuff, and it ends up making a lot of overhead. Right. Uh, and they've got a solution for that that does this uh, sort of multicast. So you actually 
you actually write small amounts of data when you want small amounts of data, and it should really improve their performance on the small block writes and stuff. So performance should be excellent. What um, about power consumption, though? That's power something... consumption is much, much less. Uh, is, is, it st- is it able to beat the current platter drives? By a, by a mile. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah. The, uh, it's going to be the desktop drives are, I think, less than a watt when they're active, and the, the enterprise drives 2.4 watts or something like that. So, uh, yeah, terribly more power efficient. Now, of course, they're going to be more expensive, too, especially cost per gigabyte. You know, they haven't announced any kind of pricing, but expect them to be quite an upsell over that. But just wicked fast and, of course, less heat, less power, more reliable because there's no spinning parts, all that good stuff. So that stuff's also coming out uh, in the next few months, you know, maybe fourth quarter this year or so. And we'll have It'll likely be a premium option, though, considering pricing of, the, of Flash the way it is compared to you know, oh, yeah, standard hard drives. Sort of the way it is now. Uh, you can get Flash built in your hard drives, I mean your hard drives, your notebooks and stuff now, and this will just be another vendor to do it, but it's a vendor with a lot of pull and a big economy of scale and all that, you know, so. And apparently they fixed some of the performance problems that we see today in Flash drives, so... We'll have more on that in the next few weeks, benchmarks and stuff like that. Good deal. As they lift non-disclosure agreements and all that. Always good.